And welcome in to a special playoff edition of On the Preds. As you can see, Sean and I are at Bridgestone Arena right after the Predators. Lost pretty bad. Yeah, it wasn't uh, probably wasn't the game you hoped to see, Alex. I don't know. No, it was pretty bad. And but we wanted to do this special edition because, um, well, number one, the Predators might not be in the playoffs very much longer, and uh, we wanted to get a special playoff edition out there before it was too late. And uh, you know, because you know, we come to these games, and uh, you know, every now and then we want to show off, you know, the office. So yeah. to speak. And uh, David Poyle was nice enough to leave us the keys, told us to lock up when we were done. So. And he dressed up nicely. I uh, just showed up in a black t-shirt. So. Yeah, I'm glad one of us decided to class it up today. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But uh, obviously today on the show we are going to talk about um, the Predators losing in uh, big fashion to mm. the Colorado Avalanche in Game 3. Um, they fought, they were down 0-2 to start the game. A couple power play goals for Colorado. That was a theme. Um, and then they tied it up on goals by Tolvanen and Duchesne. But then, um, after the Avalanche go up three to two and Roman Yossi ties it three, three, the, uh, there were some pivotal moments that happened right after that. Um, and ultimately all that matters is the Predators are down Oh three game four is on Monday and they try not to get swept. Sean, yeah, you, it's pretty bad. You've got to be, you know, you can sit there and go through all the goals. You can talk about, you know, we look back at game one, uh, ugly loss. Yeah. Lots of goals by the Avalanche. But at the end of the day, it was an 0-1 series. And, of course, at the end of the day today, it's an 0-3 series with another ugly loss. So at some point, though, when you start seeing those uh, lopsided lopsided losses for the Predators, you have to say, okay, team's 0-3. Might yeah. not go on much longer. And it was very odd listening to John Hines after the game, I maybe maybe odds not the right word. He, John Hines after the game talked about this the way that you might expect him to talk about a Tuesday loss to the Minnesota Wild in November. Very calm, um, very calm, very, very calm, and also just like he really liked the team five on five. He really yeah. thought they did some good things. They, you know, they had taken on so much water in games one and two in Colorado, and then uh, in this game, he thought their five on five game was pretty good. And and I, I don't necessarily disagree with him. But when you lose seven to three, and you know you you give up a goal like they did on goal number four by Colorado, and you basically don't have a chance to come back in the series unless by some miracle UC Soros comes back, and also if Philip Forsberg starts go- scoring mm. goals, and maybe Roman Yossi steps up his game. I mean, like there's so many things that are not going well for the Predators right now. And the and the question that was asked was really about you know what do you think this was an issue of not bringing the physicality? The response was. I really liked our game at five on five. And, yeah. And I think there is, I, I don't know. There is a lot of people in that room kind of going. Eh. I mean, yeah, he, he, you know, when it comes down to special teams is 20 minutes of the game and we got other things to talk about. We'll do, we'll do that in a second, but uh, you know, special teams are, you know, by, by time, not a huge part of the game, but by, by imp- impact and by importance, special teams are huge. Yeah. Uh, the predators didn't get a goal in the five on three and two on uh, Thursday's game. Two, for, I'm sorry, was that Thursday? Yeah, Thursday's game two, and they lost that game. And then you get a goal there, it would have been huge. Tonight, today, the, Pre- the Avalanche scored four power play goals. That was a, a major difference. So um, I do want to talk about what was, I think, the most pivotal moment in the game. And I think you would agree with me. I think most people would would, would name it this. Before we do that, we got to talk about relax the back. Oh. So because... <laughs> Still got the O in there. I still like it. I'm excited about relaxing the back. Just real quick, 2020 Glen Echo Road. Uh, you've got to go to this store. Relax the back is a is a awesome place to go check out all of their options for relaxing for you know your back, obviously, but even for work, office, sleep, all that. Uh, if you want to work better, live better, feel better every day, you got to check out Relax the Back. Uh, back, it'll help you sleep well and live well. Um, they've got tons of just options for just relaxing at your home, recliners. Uh, the zero gravity chair, like we oh, talked man. about, Love it. Uh, the massage chair, the whole body 7.1 massage chair, the the Chi XE massage chair, that thing is incredible. Um, but ultimately, you've got to learn about the four pillars of wellness, and that is healthy sleep, healthy work, healthy body, and healthy mind. 2020 Glen Echo Road, go see Glenn and his uh, folks there, a sleep agent always on hand to talk about things that you need to, to fix your pain issues, to relax your back at Relax the Back. So I, I just felt better going there. You just felt better going When there? I left, I felt better. My back felt better. I felt at peace. Well, 
apparently John Hines went to relax the back after that game because he felt great about his team today. Uh, and uh, he was pr- plenty relaxed talking about how he, he really liked his team today. Uh, I thought that was a very odd uh, comment. Maybe not something that's so totally surprising. John Hines kind of really pretty pretty a po- pretty positive guy. I mean, what else? What's he going to say? What's he going to go in there and <laughs> talk about how his team was terrible? And I, you know, I think I think there's this there's this misconception amongst a lot of fans. And I I mean, I was a fan before I did this for a long time. And, uh-huh. and you know the players, the coaches, they don't react, especially toward the media, the way that you would expect them to as a fan. Right. They don't, they don't show rage, anger, you know, they don't even show extreme happiness when they do well. You know, you go right. down and talk to Matt Duchesne scoring his 40th goal, Philip Forsberg scoring his 40th goal. And they're like, yeah, it was good. It was nice to get that. And yeah. It, like you said, it was, you know, like a, like a Tuesday night game against the wild in November. Yeah. Just calm as can be. It was, yeah. I mean, again, What's he gonna do? He, he can't. He can't. I mean, I think a lot of a lot of coaches would probably uh, not have a whole lot to say after a game like that. But um, you know, Hines knows that he's got to go in there and somehow motivate those twenty guys to go out and try to fight for their life in the playoffs on Monday. So, all right, let's go to the pivotal moment of the game. The Avalanche score a goal, three to two. I believe it was Landeskog, or was it Rantanen? I think it was Landeskog. Landeskog scores a goal. There was a player skating in to on you know on the backside of Connor Ingram. Uh, there was some contact, maybe a, I guess a little bit of contact between the Preds player and the Avalanche player. Yeah. Anyways, there's, the goal goes in, but the Predators challenge it for goaltender interference. Mm. So the roulette wheel spins. We don't know where it's going to land, red or black, um, and it lands on black or red or whatever the bad color is because it counts as a good goal because the NHL says that the avalanche skater that made contact with Ingram's skate, which was uh, a, a big impact on why he was not able to make that save, um, was that contact was initiated by a Preds defenseman. So the goal counted three to two because of the NHL rules. Now the goaltender interference not being up or not changing the result, the Predators are charged with a delay of game. They go on the penalty kill, which, as we've already talked about, has been a bad situation for them. And Connor Ingram makes probably the worst play of the playoffs for him. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he, he gets confused behind the net. There's a there's a four-checker crashing. He's got defensemen there. I think he thought that he had someone on the back end, or he just misplayed the puck. I'll have to go back and watch it, but he... Um, he makes a terrible pass right in front of the slot, right to Nazem Kadri, who buries basically an empty net. Four to two, and that really sealed it. I mean, like, the, the Predators tried to, to fight back and tried to get another goal there. I'm sorry, not four to two, five to three. Sorry, five to three. And uh, I got the scores wrong on that thing, but you, you know what I'm saying. They're down two goals in the second period. What do you think about that play? Well, it's unfortunate, and, and I think the problem is – you you know that that's the play that if you take everything that's happened in this playoffs that Connor Ingram's going to look back on and say I wish I could take that back. Yeah. And and I think what's hard about it too is that that does happen on the ensuing power play that comes after the overturned goaltender interference attempt and and that's just you know and Hines talked about that after the game as well. I mean these aren't things that he's just sitting on the bench and just oh hey. Let's challenge that. It looked bad. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a whole team that watches yeah. these things. A gets good team. Replay- yeah, a good great team, team of video pe- players. And and good he even coaches. he stayed with that after the game. We still feel like that was goaltender interference. The league determined it wasn't. And realistically, mm-hmm. well, it's a tough call. And I I don't think that I don't think that goal happens. Yeah. If that call isn't overturned, if that call that challenge isn't uh, a failed challenge. You don't think which goal happens? The, the Connor Ingram? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I don't. I, I mean, I think um, Connor Ingram was not the same Ingram we saw Thursday night. But, you know, when he when he gives up four power, four power play goals, those are not necessarily on the goaltenders. You're going to be hard-pressed to find anyone that's going to blame a goaltender for all the power play no. goals that they score on the team. Uh, that's a result of bad play by the forwards and defense to get them on the penalty kill to begin with. And it's it's – a result of just being in a terrible situation where you're playing one of the best power plays in hockey and uh, you're not going to be able to hold them off for long. So, no. so I, I, I think uh, Ingram played maybe, maybe like a little, a little worse than he definitely played worse than he did Thursday, but he was not the reason for this loss. It was 
a lot of other things on the ice. Yeah, you're not you're not going to hang the loss on them. You're not going to hang, you know. I mean, a lot of the goals. It's a power play situation for the Avalanche. You're talking about one of the best power plays in the league. Yeah, it's not. It's not an ideal situation to get the aval- to give the Avalanche a power play in the first place because chances are they're dynamic enough that they're going to make something happen. And even if they don't score on it, they're going to wear you down while you kill it off. Yeah, I mean, it, they, look, the Avalanche are an incredible team. I mean, they, they have so many weapons at every on every line. Their power play is incredible. Their penalty kill is very good. Um, the, the Predators put up three goals today and... Really, I mean, I, I, I never, after that goaltending challenge, goaltender interference challenge didn't go their way, and then the Connor Ingham play happened, I felt like that was pretty much the end. The whole third period, there was a little bit of a push from Nashville. Colorado really kind of sank back and didn't do a ton of, of attacking, but still put up another, oh, I guess it was an empty netter. They did have one, they had one five-on-five goal. I think that was, it was a Devin Taves. Yeah, Devin Taves' goal. That was not a great goal for, for Connor Ingram. He gave up went in between his legs there. But am I thinking about that right? Yeah, I think that's right. Or he came down the left side of the ice, yeah. just fired it. Yeah. Just fired it. Didn't miss, he missed it, yeah. Probably probably not the best one for him to give up. But um look, the 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 the, the Predators after that were just lost twenty five minutes of the game, it was pretty much over. Now, I think I think you talk about like a momentum killing goal, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think there was a lot of talk on Twitter, social media. Everybody was saying, you know, hey, if if the, uh, if the Avs score on this, that's the end of the game. Or some people were saying that's the end of the series. Yeah. And you talk about a momentum killer. I mean, it was a demoralizing goal. Yeah. To begin with, much less the fact that that kind of put I don't want to say put the game out of hand, but it mm-hmm. definitely put the Predators in a situation where they were scrambling. They yeah. knew their time was limited, and they were. Probably behind the eight ball. I could I could get some more uh, sayings out there if you need me to. But the, the reality is, when were they I, up a creek without a paddle? They were. Which creek were they up? Don't uh. say it. Don't say it. There's kids <laughs> watching. Look, the, the the fact of the matter is, when we start having to use aphorisms such as those, yeah, that tells you that the situation wasn't a positive one. And if you're going to continue to put yourself in those situations as a team, you're probably going to continue to pay the price. Yeah. So let's talk about some other things that did not go well for the Predators uh, before we touch on Monday's game. Um, I thought uh, I thought Matt Duchesne played pretty much as well as he has the series. He's been he's been probably the best offensive threat for the Predators. Um, he had a fantastic goal to start the game for Nashville. Um, look, a lot of people have been uh, banging on Philip Forsberg, and t- today I, I I have to agree with them. I mean, like he he's he really looks like he's gripping it too tight right now. He cannot he cannot find the goal. He had the charging penalty on uh, I guess he I guess that was Logan O'Connor that he just decked. Definitely a penalty, dangerous hit. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets a call from DOPS. Um, I don't know about a suspension, but like fine could definitely be in the in the works. I you know who knows on that stuff, but I don't know if Logan O'Connor was hurt on the play. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think so. So Philip Forsberg, not a great game from him. Uh, Roman Yossi, you know, he had the he had the power play goal, but there were some times where I just felt like he was pushing it, and I, he didn't really seem to just stand out like he normally does. Uh, who else stands out? Oh, Luke Cunning. I mean, Luke Cunning might be might be the worst forward for the Predators right now that continues to get ice time. Would you agree? Um, it's pretty rough out there, Alex, for Luke Cunning. I, like, the guy is. Look, he had a good production, a good season for production last year. Put up some goals. He has, I think, thirteen this year. He has, he's had eight goals in twenty twenty two. Since January first, he scored eight goals, only two assists. He's been a very, very below average puck possession player. Very, very below average expected goals share player um, for, for that entire stretch, and yet he continues to get playing time. Adam Vingan of the Athletic asked him about that after asked John Hines about that about why Luke Cunning gets the get, keeps getting those kind of roles. I think that was a great question. I'll have to go back and listen to his answer, but I think he said something basically like he plays the game the right way and he's he's got this sort of physical style that fits well with what the Predators do. It has to be that because it can't be anything else on the score sheet. Um, penalties are really bad. He's got a, he's, he's he's been up there in penalties with the, the rest of the team all year. Very poorly timed penalties, by the way. I mean, just really, really dumb decisions. Um, Luke Cunning's 
definitely not playing himself into a contract right now. <laughs> no, and I think, too, and one of the things that John Hines did say in response to that question was he talked about how in a top six role, especially for a young player, there can be a lot of pressure, which I think was really, if you look at the way Hines has played some of those younger players, speaking specifically of Ellie Tolvanen, Philip yeah. Tomasino, maybe even looking at Tommy Novak, Cody Glass, Phil Myers, these are young players who really aren't getting that benefit of the doubt. They're, mm-hmm. they're kind of being pushed into fourth line roles, third pairing roles, where they're not really given a chance to succeed. But in flashes, when they yeah. do have their moments, they do succeed. But yeah. we're looking at Luke Cunnan playing very consistently in the top six and continuing to exhibit that kind of play, especially when it comes to taking bad penalties. Yeah, It's, it's kind of hard for me to buy that that I, argument. I think he was moved around quite a bit today. Um, he, I know he started with Johansson. I, I'm trying to remember exactly where he went. I, I feel like I saw him on a lot of different places, but, I mean, I, he's owed, he, you know, he's he's – on a contract this year where he's earning two two point three two point four million, he's not worth that. Even if, even if that's a if, even if that's a, a contract number that's pretty low in co- co- compared to a lot of other players. Sure, he's not a guy that I would offer a a, a, an ex- a very long contract to, and I definitely wouldn't pay him that or more. Um, I don't know. I, I can't. I really don't see a situation in which Luke Cunning should really be on this team next year, but. You know, I, I mean, he's not, he's an NHL player. I'm not saying that, but he'll, he'll find a job somewhere. But I just, I don't, I don't see it right now for, for him. I would, I would say he finds a job here on this team. I mean, I don't think you play a guy in the top six or 82 games. I mean, would you pay, would you pay 2.4 or 2.5 million for that guy again this year, next year? Would I do it? <laughs> No, but I don't get to make those decisions. I'm trying to get into the heads of the people who do, yeah. and, and I'm going to be quite honest that if unless there's a coaching change, yeah, I, I think they're going to say to the coach, like, yeah. hey, you played this guy. Do you trust him? And right. he's going to say yes, and they're going to give him another contract. Yeah. Um, maybe we can mention that at the very end, coaching change. I don't know. We'll, 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 maybe we'll save that, actually. Save that for, for a future show. Ooh. I don't think I don't think we're quite to that point where we need to start talking about that, but we'll we'll touch on that on a, on a future show. Got to fi- finish up talking about this. Although before we do that, um, we got to we got to briefly touch on uh, Monday uh, because the Predators have one more game at least in their season. Um, are you hungry? Yes. What if I told you you could have a pre-proportioned box of meals delivered to your door? You could just go home, and in 20 minutes or less, you could just have a meal cooked, delicious, prepared for you. And, well, not prepared for you. You'd have to prepare it. But uh, <laughs> uh, the, good. the recipe is out there for you. <laughs> and then you could do it yourself, and it would be uh, it would be a very inexpensive, quick way to get dinner on the table for your family. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I've got to drive home from here. It's like 40 minutes in the car. Okay. I could stop at a fast food place and sit in line for no, longer don't do that. than that. No, I don't... could sit in line for longer than 20 oh, minutes, yeah, Alex. You could. That is very true. I'd These have days, to leave my dogs put up longer. It's a good point. It'd be a problem. It's a good point. You could you could sit in line for longer at, at, at a McDonald's or a Taco Bell much longer than it would take to prepare a meal from HelloFresh, oh. which is America's number one meal kit. It's all about convenience with HelloFresh. Not only do the ingredients come pre-proportioned, so you're not overbuying and wasting food, but it's easier than ever to get filling meals on the table in a snap with family-friendly, quick and easy recipes. You can also customize your favorite dishes, swap out a protein, maybe get a different vegetable in there, maybe accommodate, you know, obviously accommodate for any like allergies or anything you've got. Um, but if you want to try it, you've got to go to HelloFresh.com slash Pred16. Use the code Pred16 for 16 free meals and also some free gifts. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Pred16, 16 free meals. That's a lot of free meals. Test it out, and uh, I think you will not be disappointed. I've been using it forever; it's awesome. Love I'm, it. I'm going to tell you, I like, I like my meals the way I likes my podcasts about the Preds, <laughs> and that's family friendly. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It's true. I th- th- it's it's a struggle to make this one family friendly. I'll say that because this this game was so bad, and the result was terrible. First time the Predators have ever been down three nothing in a series. That's not a record that anyone wanted to see set so Mm. speaking of which Mm. the predators do not want to make it the first time they've ever been swept they've done the sweeping before that was a much different scenario back in 2017 when they swept chicago monday night the predators host 
The Colorado Avalanche in Game 4, 8.30 local time start. I mean, they already made some changes going into this game. Yep. Cody, they call Cody, Cody Glass up. He gets to play on a line with Tom, Tomasino and Tolvanen. I thought that line looked pretty good, to be honest. Well, I would saw them on the power play. Yeah, saw them on the power play. They, I think they look good on the power play, too. Um, that is a combination I think could stick, and n- not just this year, but next year, too. The Are there any other changes that they could make going into to Monday? I mean, they've kind of thrown everything they have at the Avalanche at this point. There's one change they could make. What's that? UC Soros could be magically fixed <clears throat> and back on the ice. That's true. But I will point out, at post-game media availability, John yeah. Hines said he didn't have an answer as to whether or not he'd be available. Yep. They did not have an answer for that at that time. So um, I, I I doubt it. You, you, you know where, where I am on this. I, I think he's definitely not going to be back for Monday. I think they would have to go into the next series until he's even possibly going to be back, given the nature of his injury. But um, So not a goaltending situation. I think it's going to be Connor Ingram again. They have to just hope that they get game two Connor Ingram and not oh, yeah. game three. And, you know, I, I think maybe maybe Mark Borowiecki coming back. I mean, that could make a difference maybe. Maybe not a huge one. I mean, they had they had Benning in place for Borowiecki today playing with Lazan. Yeah. I don't know if you take Benning out and put Borowiecki in or yeah. Lazan out. I thought Lazan, aside from a penalty. Well, he didn't even take a penalty, did he? Lazan? Yeah. He did. He did. Okay. He did so one. he did take a penalty. Aside from taking a penalty, I mean, he, he brings some pretty good physicality to the game. Yeah. Um, Borvietsky does as well. The physicality um, right now is not working. I mean, like, but but that's the Preds game, so it's like, I mean, I guess that means that they're probably not going to win this series. Like, they they can't. They've been bringing as best they can the game that they know, and it has not worked. They are down three zero. So I don't think there's any way that this could be. Uh, there's there's no, there's no last second switch where all of a sudden they find a a puck moving defenseman that can come in and really change the nature of the game. Maybe the only possibility would be Jeremy Davies, but I think he's already back in Milwaukee now. Yep. And I don't think he's the answer necessarily. Um, there's no other answer. I mean, it's just they need they need Philip Forsberg to step up. They need Ryan Johansson to be the same Johansson they've seen in the past, uh, this this year. Mikhail Granlin, he needs to be that playmaker again. What about the Janot Tr- trennan Sissons line? That line has not produced anything over the last – Tr- Trennan had a couple goals the other night, but that, he was playing in a different role. And they were it, that wasn't really a pro, those goals weren't really the product. Or did he have two goals? They had one. Maybe he one. did have two. Didn't he have two? I can't recall. Anyways, he's had two over the course of the series. That, that's what it is. Yeah, one and one in so, games one and two. But either way, the Geno Sissons trending line has not been um, what we've seen this this year. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> maybe they don't get maybe they don't, they don't give up four power play goals on Monday. And it's a, a a five to four game, and and they come out on top. Maybe it maybe it's three to three tight. They push it to overtime, and then a bounce goes their way in overtime, and they they, they win it in overtime and force a game five. That's about all I can see. I, I cannot see a, a scenario in which the Predators go out and just like handle the Avalanche and all that they can do and beat them three to nothing or something. It's just I don't I don't see any scenario like that. It's going to be a tight game that they're going to have to score a lot of goals. Yeah, and I think too. We talked about potential changes that could help, and we're talking about everything on the bottom six. We're talking about the third pairing. The Predators' success this season was built on their top six guys playing like top six guys. Yeah. And as you've come into this playoff series, outside of Matt Duchesne, you're not really seeing it. And I think that's the biggest issue. Mm-hmm. We're not going to find a solution at the bottom of the lineup. We're not going to find a solution by bringing someone from Milwaukee. The solution is those guys on the top six – need to start bringing it yeah that's that's the only solution yeah i mean i think if you have a a, a result where or a, a scenario where forsberg can produce the way he's produced in the playoffs in the past where he's actually you know he's been a great playoff performer for the yep. predators in the past and then you have a defense that can stifle maybe the top line, j- just the top line. Just try to find a way to stop the top line of the Avalanche, force the Kadri line and the Helm line, the the uh, whoever the third the third line is, whoever's on the third line, uh, find a way to stifle the top line only. That would be the best way that you could probably find a way to not get swept. But that's such a tall task. I mean, they've been trying to do that for three games. They can't do it so. Force them to dump the puck, 
yeah. make them chase it, crush them in the corners, yeah. a, and, and basically make them think twice about doing that. And yeah. If you can keep them from entering the zone cleanly and forcing them to think twice about dumping it, well, yeah. I mean, there's a solution, but it hasn't happened over the course of the first three games. Right. Uh, why would it start happening in the fourth? I don't know. There's not a switch you can flip to make that happen. No. Is there? No. And, uh, it's, you know, today, the you know, one thing that happened in this game that was interesting, um, before the game, who was on the video screen Pecorine. cheering on the team? Pecorine. Pecorine. And uh, that was a cool moment, but uh, you know, I, I was I was thinking like you know maybe that could be the spark, it could it could uh, ignite a team to 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 pull off a win like this. Boy, that didn't happen. Like winning one for crispy. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Same thing. So, <laughs> anyways, I think that's it. I think that's all we've got. I mean, like this was a, this was a um, a bad result on the ice because of just a few major mistakes that happened in the wrong time. Yeah. Power play goals, giving them up. Giving up four power play goals in a playoff game. I mean, there, there is. I don't know. The, I don't know the results here, but like, I would imagine if you tried to find any team that has won a playoff game in which they gave up four power play goals, I bet there's none. I bet there's zero. No. I think you're right. Maybe even like maybe like a team from the '80s did it one time. The mm. Islanders or something. Maybe they gave up four and they scored six. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. All right. You know, I think a good way to really just kind of go home and, and kind of wash this out of our minds. Go home, prepare a HelloFresh meal, <laughs> sit in your zero-gravity chair there you go. from Relax the Back. There you go. Exactly. Do that. Do that, and uh, you will feel better come Monday. And relax a lot tomorrow because Monday night is going to be a long night for Nashville. Um, very, yeah. very long. 8.30 local time start. Uh, well, Tuesday is going to be the really the day you're going to have to recover. Tuesday is going to be rough. So, you know, I don't know what your plan is, but I'm going to sleep in. I work from home. Oh, I was bragging camp going, Alex. (laughs) Feel good. About as well as twin day went. Got all my merit badges from bragging camp. That's all I can say. Going about as well as twin day. Thanks for watching. This is on the Preds live from, well, not live, but. Well, we recorded it live. We recorded it live. We did it live. We're doing it live. (laughs) See you, everybody.